Hey everybody, Jacob here for the PickupTest.com, an electric string player, and I'm here at a very interesting booth called Digitize Smart Musical Instruments. We kind of were hearing about these guys from some of our string playing brethren already at the show, and now we found their site. So, tell us a little bit about who you are, first of all, and about this amazing uh, new invention you've come up with. Hi, so I'm Raphael from Digitize, and we are based in Vienna in Austria. And we uh, uh, created a new uh, violin which uh, maintains the classical body of the instrument and has a digital fingerboard. So the fingers are getting tracked by the, by the sensor on it. Uh, so you have the fingers uh, tracking, you have the motion tracking uh, with the, with with the built-in uh, motion tracker. There is a wireless microphone as well. And all of that comes to the computer with our standalone software. Um, yeah, so that's it. So you just said a, a mouthful before you said that's it. So I, I want to break it down for everyone because we've actually just spent a couple of minutes here really understanding all of these things because each one has different implications and what it could do and how you could use it in performance. So the first thing you said is this has a sensor uh, built into the fingerboard. Now, usually when we talk about MIDI with string instruments, we're talking about pitch to MIDI conversion, which usually has a lot of issues in terms of accuracy, right? Tracking all of the expressive things we do on the instrument in real time. And also, it, all of the strings are one sound, essentially, right? So when we talk about pitch to MIDI, you don't get a lot of the benefits of like guitar synthesizers where each string can be tracked separately and maybe turned into a different instrument or mapped to different expressive possibilities. But this is a completely different approach here. What we've got here is, this is not only sensors built all over the fingerboard, but you can map each string individually, is that Exactly, right? yeah. So, so each string can be mapped individually and uh, the pitch algorithm takes the position of the finger instead of uh, analyzing the pitch. Yeah. It also does it while calibrating, because you have to calibrate a violin. Once you bought it, you make a calibration once, yeah. so it knows which uh, note is under which uh, finger or like which position, and then it doesn't use it much. So, yeah. so it doesn't rely on pitch to MIDI. So also, even in this kind of environment where it's very loud, you're still able to play very accurate, and most important, you can also play polyphonics. So, like like the MIDI tracking, like pitch tracking, it's not only monophonic, or it doesn't get crazy, like yes. if you play more tones at the same time. A lot of double stops, that's yeah, always, will destroy like most MIDI violins. Yes, exactly. So if you have a look at this, uh, at the software, uh, I'm not sure if you want to zoom in, but um, you can see here the bridge and the points on the bridge. So it detects like each string. So if I play four four strings, it's 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 completely okay. So that yellow light is all four strings being touched yeah, by you right now on the bridge. Yeah, I play an A major chord. Yeah. And I imagine this would also, uh, yeah, it just makes sense that this would be a lot faster than pitch to MIDI, all the numbers being crunched. If you do some expressive portato thing with vibrato, all the different things that could be happening with this, you're pushing buttons. So as we know from you know pads or keyboards or whatever, buttons are a lot more accurate, a lot faster, a lot sure. easier to track as far as just notes being turned into numbers or information being exactly, turned into numbers. Yeah, yeah so you can, you can understand it as a violin as it is, plus uh, like sliders, uh, like a keyboard. Yes. It, it is like a keyboard because uh, it has a surface and uh, and you know you just press on it and, and it plays straight away. I love how you mentioned and I think it's worth reiterating that in a loud situation and a lot of the time when we play amplified, it's obviously loud, right? A uh, pitch to MIDI has got a lot of inherent flaws there. It's it's hearing everything else in the same way a microphone bleeds, right? Yeah. Uh, you're using some type, but you also mentioned if that weren't cool enough. There's also an actual Omni microphone here as well. Yeah, we're using actually the same type of microphones that, that you have find, can find in every like iPhone or iPad. Uh -huh. So that's this, the newest technology, it's called MEMS microphones. Uh -huh. So it's like a very small microphone, which has the DAC convert, uh, the ADC converter. Yes. So it converts the, the analog signal to the digital already on, on board. Yes, on board and version. So, so it, it doesn't consume much uh, power, 
It's very efficient yes. and the sound quality is just amazing for that size. Yeah. So, um, and the, also, the, the other thing is that you also don't need any audio card with the system because the, the wireless audio comes directly to the computer. Hold yeah. on, he, so it's also wireless. The audio and the MIDI is yeah, going exactly. wirelessly and at the same time? So yeah, you exactly. have two channels? Yeah, exactly. So we have a, a, a custom uh, radio protocol yes. which takes take care of that. So we have a receiver dongle. It's a USB dongle here which receives all the data and it splits it up uh, into MIDI and audio. So the audio is streamed uh, via um, VST plugin. So you get the audio from the plugin like directly straight to your DAW and the MIDI as, as it is, like, uh, you know. It seems like this solves so many performance issues that I think really creative string players that are really trying to push different boundaries might have. I mean, even the look of this thing you know, when you talk about, like, it doesn't look like there's anything mounted, so it even has that ultra clean aesthetic that classical musicians are really looking for and want. You know, it's like, when you talk about a bunch of wires or maybe needing, like, when you talk about MIDI, obviously, like an electric instrument, which is a whole, you know, a lot of traditional players are just turned off by that look, that vibe, or even the playability of some of those things. This is just like, it's sort of everything that you want. Like, even not even having to have a single wire coming off of this, totally wireless. Uh, we're going to demo this in just a second. I'm wondering if, if we can do that somehow. But also, before we, we do that, I, I'm wondering, what is your background? Like, how did you come up with this? I assume this is your invention? Yes. You're is. the owner of the company? Yes, I am the owner of the company, together with a friend of mine. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, I, I started in Vienna, uh, classical viola okay. and composition. So like two, 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 two things, right. and like Vienna is known for, for a music tradition, like, you know, of course. Concert, um, Beethoven and so on. And it's a very conservative in a way. Um, and I think that's, and that, that the, on the other hand, uh, there is also a very, uh, uh, very strong uh, contemporary music scene there. Yes. So the, on the one side, people uh, playing Mozart all the time. And on the other hand, you have like uh, you know producers and, and people trying to experiment with uh, yes. live electronics, whatever. And and the, this bridge between both, like like asking musicians to play uh, contemporary music on a regular violin, and then having like live electronics connected to that. Yeah, and then and which was, was was missing. Uh, so I, yeah, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. And it's amazing to me, I uh, because as bowed string players, we have our hands full right uh, usually all the time the ability to for me you know there's MIDI of just imitating other instruments which is fine you know making your it's cool to sound like a flute or whatever you know that's cool but the ability to actually control MIDI instruments and to be able to control your DAW and to be able to do all of these things without necessarily having to completely rely on your feet and yeah. to be able to do these types of I mean that's really yeah, that's such a cool, exciting thing. And I assume you also must have had some engineering background. You also have this app that you've shown us. This is, yeah, you yeah, guys yeah, have created yeah. software, hardware integration, Bluetooth, all of this. Uh, tell us a little bit about where that comes from. Yeah, well, Surely no string player would be able to come up with all of this. On the, no offense, guys. Yeah, well, I was always interested in, in programming as well. Uh -huh. So, um, like the first prototypes uh, back like 10 years ago, it started already like 10, 10 years ago with the first prototypes. I was using like a VHS uh, tapes. I you know some, some old, 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 older audience would uh, you know, like the old video tapes, yeah, sure. which have some certain resistance, like okay. electrical resistance. Yes. And then just to check if you slide, like if you put some some finger or some stuff on I it, see, yeah, it changes the, 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 the current. The, the the current and all the, all the so, so it started very like basic, wow. and I got some support at my university uh, from from the um, uh, like the te technician guys, yes. and so this started like like that. I had a lot of cables. Like the first version was like as you said, like with you know a lot of things, and then. Uh, then we got um, just like like uh, we created a startup, got some foundings, you know, some sponsors and stuff, and so we could uh, actually um, arrange a team because I mean I can program and I'm, I'm supervising all this stuff, 
but at some point you just uh, need to have you know like a special specialists like IT, the hardware specialist, the firmware, all this stuff. Yeah. So I'm kind of supervising and, and like telling what it should do and how it should work yeah. as a musician, like with the music musical background. Very important. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it no, it's amazing how many companies do yeah. things in this space without musicians at yeah. the helm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm keeping my hands uh, on it all the time. Right. So I'm testing uh, everything, and uh, you know, like, like to come up with ideas. Like we have this, uh, this, 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 uh, this slider here, and uh, like, why not using this area as a momentary button? Like you exactly. Want to switch. Exactly. So, like, I can, uh, I can uh, adjust, adjust it this way so that I uh, turn just on map on. that. Yeah. So like, like, like turn on the reverb, delay, whatever. All your pedals are right there. Exactly, yeah. So I don't really need to use any foot controller. Or yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. And that, to me, that gets so exciting, yeah. you know, because it really puts the music at your fingertips the same way someone who has a synth with pads or somebody who, you know, is playing pads for that matter or whatever. I, it's it, That's just incredibly cool, man. So one last thing before we demo this. Uh, I think what the big question everybody's going to want to know is, how much does this cost? Is this available in the United States? And it, what does it take to get this on a violin? Do you need to buy the whole violin? It's, I imagine it's a retrofit. Tell us a little bit about the logistics, if it's available, and what kind of street price we're looking at. Yeah, so um, it started as a DIY project. So people were able to, we, we did a Kickstarter, Kickstarter yeah. like two years ago, and uh, we sold the, the, the sensor foil and the hardware separately, so so you could just uh, attach it to any violin and uh, and uh, this this thing. But we stopped doing that because uh, like it is possible, but it's kind of tricky. Like has to be done right, like applied yeah, perfectly, it, it, and yeah. everything's got to be yeah. Exactly. I don't think I would want to attempt that. <laughs> like so, then then we uh, then we found our great partner, which is the Stentor. Uh, string instruments. It's a it's a an old in English company with big traditions. They are building uh, string instruments, and so we are uh, we are doing it together right now, and uh, we are using their instruments. I see. And uh, and they glue it already in the factory. So the fingerboard comes with the violin from Stentor, and you can buy it as a set. So you have a nice sounding violin with a nice bow. Um, with the digitized system, and that's, that's how, how you buy it, buy it. I see. So you, you're, this is a complete purchase. You're buying the violin with the hardware, everything installed out the door. Yeah, exactly. And do, are there different models of violins? Some maybe nicer, some more maybe toward the student level. Do you have yeah. different, uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so, so this is a very fresh product. Uh, we just started, actually it started like one, two months ago. Uh, like the real, real, I want mine now, <laughs> right now. <laughs> Just kidding. We have three pieces here. No, so so we started like we are starting, kind of uh, like slow and try to you know to get because you, you have no comparable product on the market. So that's true. First of all, you have to bring the people to you know to understand how it works, what it does, and you know how to use it. Um, so we decided to start like pretty slow, uh, and uh, we're doing the distribution in Europe right now. And the US is coming soon because the Stentor is, has uh, its uh, dealers and retailers also in the US. Okay, so US distribution kind of yeah, lined it's, up. It's possible. To, it's possible. Like if you really, if you really, really want to do it, you can um, you can write to us directly on our website uh, www.digitize.com. EU, EU as European Union. Um, so we can figure out something out. But um, yeah, it's uh, the price. It's uh, right now it's around two thousand euros okay. for the fiddle. It's for uh, exactly. It's a violin with a with a bow, with the case, uh, with the software. So a, a whole outfit. Yeah. Well, I mean the the violin itself. It's uh, it's it's a rather good model. And uh, it sounds good, and it costs also like uh, you know, and the technology it's it's it's, I mean, it's very reasonable. Yeah, and, and uh, I think yeah, and I, think, I mean, yeah, it's <laughs> very reasonable. Yeah, you know, we, we, we try to you know to start like, we we we, we hope to make like a real deal uh, with them the quantity, 
because we really believe in that product. So I think it's a good, you know, strategy. One last question I had. This is obviously because it's wireless and all of that. It needs to be charged, I assume. Yes, or there's a some kind of battery in here. Yeah, you can see the other one is charging right now. Ah, oh, okay. That's what that's what this is. Okay, and what is this USB C? Yes. Okay. No, it's a micro USB. Micro USB. Okay. Yeah. And uh, what kind of battery life are we looking at? Charging time. Well, I've got a gig in an hour. What do I do with my fiddle? Like, what do, what do yeah, one hour is more than enough to charge it. Uh, like not fully, but uh, like like if you fully charge it, like over. I know, three, four hours. Yeah. We say eight hours to be safe, like not to have any, you know, anybody thing. But uh, I had, to, I think this violin was uh, since eight in the morning. Yeah. And it went uh, until four. So we can count it. Uh, <laughs> but as I'm a musician, I can't count. Um, and it took like 30% of the battery. So it had, it had still had like 70%. And this is sending over Bluetooth, but there's also another transmission option, right? You have a dongle. Can you tell us about that? I'm sorry, there's so many facets to this product. Uh, I don't want to yeah, leave sure. anything out. Sure. So uh, there are two modes of connecting. The first one is the, the, the direct radio mode, which is a custom solution made uh, especially for us, which allows sending the wireless audio uh, with an ultra low latency, and all, as well as the MIDI. Uh, so we have a receiver, uh, it's a USB dongle connected to a computer and with a one uh, like on the button, if you push the button uh, you can switch the modes. So now it uh, flashes blue, which means uh, Bluetooth MIDI. So now I... Oh, there it is. So, so now it's uh, looking for a Bluetooth connection. Yes. So if you switch to the Bluetooth mode, it behaves as a regular Bluetooth, Bluetooth MIDI. Device. Without a dongle. Without a dongle and without the audio. Wow, okay. <laughs> because audio is like, it doesn't fit the, the Bluetooth. Enough. Yeah, the bandwidth isn't enough. Exactly, like. and also the latency. and the, we, could, we, could, we could squeeze it, but the, you know, the sound quality and the latency wouldn't... Really yeah, if there's any latency in an acoustic instrument product like this, it's not yeah, going to... Exactly, so that was the, the idea, to have the high quality audio on the radio mode, on a computer, like... Do you know the latency specs? How many milliseconds for signal to, with the, I know it's gonna vary a little bit, you know, with maybe with distance with, you know, I'm not a Bluetooth expert, but just. Yeah, well. Are we talking sub six milliseconds? Sub yeah. 20 milliseconds? Yeah, I mean, everything, be, everything below 10 milliseconds. Okay, well that's, that's a good threshold. If you're below 10 milliseconds, it's gonna feel like your instrument. Um, yeah, well, it, it's. There are some things that, I mean, the, the latency comes not only from the, because the data is it's going very fast. Also the processing. Of the, the processing, and, but, but, most, but most of all, if you are using like some envelopes, uh, when you play with the bow and to decide when to start the note, you know, when you start with very slow and very uh, light, like you have to decide when the note starts. Yeah. So if you set the threshold very high, sometimes it just takes some time to start the note. Sure. So, so the latency itself, the data, it's 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 close to, to to zero. It's almost nothing. It's about the settings, you know. Dig that. So we were splitting uh, four strings on four different sounds. On the G string we had uh, drums. On the D string we had some MS20 synthesizer. Yeah. On the D string we had some other. On the E string, A string we had some other synthesizer. And on the A E string we had a sequencer. This has a gyroscope too? Yeah, there is a gyroscope controlling the speed of the LFO of the synthesizer. Dude, you didn't even mention that yet last time. This thing has too many features to even keep track of.
Well, gosh, thank you so much for taking all this time to explain this product. I was enthralled, and I think a lot of you guys, too, are going to be really interested. This isn't just some reinventing of the wheel. This is like a real potentially game-changing product. So, yeah, really excited, and thanks so much for sharing it with us.